What's going on guys? Back here with part 2 of the PlayStation 4 collection video. So we're going to start off with uh, a big box. Little Big Planet 3. Uh, if you got it only on the PlayStation 4, came with this little plushie. I don't think this is hard to find. I don't think it's expensive if you happen to want it. It's actually really high quality. That's all that really came in the big box. Um, and a cool little box with his face on it. Um, I really do love this game. It might be the actual game's not in here, so it must be in one of the videos. I don't know, but here's the box for it, either in this video or the last one. Um, so just as I was filming this or getting ready to film this, uh, this is the uh, limited edition for Song of the Deep. I did an unboxing for this a few months back. Uh, this was it's published by GameStop, but I actually bought it from Barnes and Noble of all places, strangely enough, for 15 bucks shipped to my house so that was really sweet this is actually at, at, at least at the time it was hard to find so i hopped on it the second i saw it at barnesandnoble.com i don't know how i happened to find it but it is, i found it somehow but uh what i was saying is when i was getting ready to film this i was carrying over these couple of limiteds and this just that's how they designed it it just has a hole in the bottom like whoever designed that you did a terrible job at gamestop don't do that ever again that's just stupid um it's because the book is bigger than the actual case but it's still a really terrible design I've, dr I've dropped it more than once just by touching it because it just they just fall out of the bottom but cool game uh it's metro castlevania-esque i guess you could say but like underwater so definitely a cool game uh i've never been into these games but i want to and that's yakuza zero picked this up i actually just pre-ordered the uh it's basically a remake of yakuza one uh for the playstation 4 just pre-ordered that as well and probably one of my favorite games this generation so far, and that is Uncharted 4. To me, I would say this is a solid 8 or a 9. And I don't think games will ever become 10s anymore, in my opinion, because in order for you to get a game like this at a 10, for me, it needs to not have patches and DLC on the, on the campaign at the very least. 20 years from now, I still want to be able to play this without buggy patch nightmare and just be able to put it in and play it you won't be able to do that with this which is really unfortunate um and nintendo has already started to steer that way as well as out of breath of the wild had a day one patch of at least two to three hundred megabytes i don't know if it's game breaking this without the day one patch is game breaking so it's kind of sucks that that's the era of gaming we're in now um not too many games left uh so let's see we got dragon quest inquisition I'm a huge fan of the first one and the second one. I haven't gotten tremendously far in this. I do want to, but it's just on the back burner. Uh, Divinity Original Sin Enhanced Edition. This was a PC game, then it found its way to PlayStation and Xbox. It's kind of hard to find. It's not expensive, but it is hard to find. So if you find this, um, it's really good. Apparently it's got like 200 hours of gameplay. I haven't played it yet. Uh, I want to. Eventually I'll get around to it. It's kind of Diablo-esque, top-down view, that kind of thing. Batman Arkham Knight. I loved this game. Um, I beat it, but it took me a long time. I kind of took like a three-month hiatus from it because I got pissed off at right at the end of the game before the last boss. If you, I'm not going to spoil it if you haven't beaten it, but you probably know if you've beaten it where I got stuck. Good game, though, if you're you know familiar with the series. Um, the Order 1886. Just like Until Dawn, fantastic game. People don't give it enough credit. Play the damn thing. You can get it for like 10 bucks. It's so good. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. A game that doesn't need patches out of the box. There are no patches for this. It just works. Yay for you, Platinum Games. Uh, just Cause 3. Really cool game. I'm a huge fan of the series. Haven't beat it yet. Again, I'm kind of open-worlded out, so I'll get around to it eventually. Uh, Call of Duty Ghosts. I bought this for like 5 bucks. I like playing the campaigns. Sue me. Uh, Wastelands 2, Director's Cut. Also pretty uncommon RPG. Uh, there actually is a third one coming out. The first one was never on a console, to my knowledge. Uh, these are cool. This is kind of like uh, old school Fallout, basically. Uh, this is something I could foresee being uncommon to rare at some point in the future, and that is Godzilla. It was on PS3 in Japan, and then PS... Four and PS4 in Japan, but then only PS4 in America, I believe. Pretty confident in saying that. Uh, 
I bought this super cheap, got it for like 20 bucks, I believe. Uh, I don't see this at all anymore. So if you find this, it's an okay game if you like Godzilla, but if you don't like Godzilla, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, the Last of Us. Whew. Whew. Naughty Dog. <laughs> you boys and girls know how to make some games, man. Uh, again, another game by Platinum Games that doesn't need any patches out of the box. There are no patches for this game. It just works. Um, Infamous Second Son. Really good game. Graphically, this game still holds up very well. Beautiful game. Can't say enough about this. I've actually beaten it one and a half times. Once on good, half... Or no, once on bad, half on good. And then I just kind of gave up because I already knew how it ended. Uh, and also, it doesn't... It only came out physically in Europe, but... They released the, uh, I think it's called First Light with the girl, I forget what her name is. Awesome DLC, I do want to get that disc physically at some point, because all PS4 discs are region free. Tearaway, this was a Vita game. I have it on the Vita and the PS4. It looks better here, but it plays better on the Vita. Because it was designed specifically with the rear touchpad and the touchscreen in mind. Um, these kind of go together, and that's Dead Rising 1 and Dead Rising 2 Remaster. Really good games. Definitely recommend picking them up on the PlayStation 4 because that's where they're going to run the best other than the PC. But definitely good good games right there. A lot of these are sequels to each other. Dishonored 1 and 2. Love this game. I've beaten it about 6 or 7 times. Dishonored 2. Haven't touched it yet. Got it for Christmas. I'll get around to it eventually. I do want to, but I love the shit out of this game, so I will get to this one eventually. Um, another double. I beat this about one and a half times as well. Uh, I enjoyed it. Not the best game, but it is enjoyable. Got the sequel for Christmas as well. Haven't touched it yet. Uh, EDF 4.1 for the PlayStation 4. Awesome game. Super cheap if you can find it. Uh, actually comes with a thick manual and a reversible cover. Uh, actually, no. So it's the same cover, it just doesn't have all the writing on it. So that's kind of cool. But I like to, I don't know, I just leave it easy. I never really flip reversible covers, but... Um, oh, you know what? There is one game that is not in either of these stacks, at least I don't think. But I'll have to check back in the first part. Uh, I guess these two kind of go together as well. These are some of the limited run games I own. I don't really own many because initially I had quite a few of them. I had 12 of them, but then I gave up because they're impossible to collect. But I opened these, and I love the Shantae games, so I kept them. Uh, Shantae the Pirate Curse, I also own this on the 3DS. And uh, Risky's Revenge, I also own this on the Wii U. And on the Vita. <laughs> so I actually own that three times. Um, really good games. Uh, let's see what we got here. We got Fallout 4, haven't beat this yet. Uh, I got to the point where you got to pick your branch of which way you were going to go, and then I kind of just couldn't pick, so then I stopped playing it. Because I wanted to do them all, but I just, then I just stopped playing it. Um, these two go together as well. Got Wolfenstein and the Wolfenstein the Old Blood. These games are great. Uh, I would recommend tracking this because this is the DLC of this game. It's a physical copy. Who doesn't want physical copies? If you're watching my channel, you probably like physical copies. The Old Blood, really good expansion. This is a solid six to eight hours worth of, you know, a campaign. And this is basically a prequel to the actual Wolfenstein game. Um, and then this game... Awesome. Beautiful. Loved it. Uh, I actually played it on the PC fully and on the PS4 fully because I wanted a physical copy. Uh, another id Bethesda game, and that is Doom. I'm currently playing through this um, probably every couple of weeks. I really just dump a good two or three hours into it, so I'm playing through it. It's not really a story-intense game, so you can kind of just play it at your leisure, but really good game nonetheless. Uh, these next three go together, and that is Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6. Huge fan of this one. I remember getting it right when it came out. On the cube, of course, because that's the only way to play it, aside from on the current gen. Uh, Resident Evil 5, I actually really enjoyed it myself. And Resident Evil 6, I own it on the PS3 and on the PS4. I've never actually even gotten that far into it, because every time I try to play it, it just pisses me off and I stop playing it. Uh, and the next two are the last two. And that is Assassin's Creed Syndicate and Unity. Unity, I actually really enjoyed. This is um, a perfect example of what current-gen gaming has become. This is a nightmare of a game. It, it shouldn't have been released in the matter that it was. Um, 
now that all the patches are out, it is a good game. I do recommend playing it. Um, but it should not have been released in that mess that it was. And uh, Ubisoft learned their lesson from it, obviously, but did they really? And Syndicate, again, I got this two Christmases ago, and I still haven't played it. So it's been a while. <laughs> need to get our, like I literally haven't touched it yet. So I need to get around to playing this at some point. Um, but yeah, so that's my PS4 collection. And, um, just that a little bit. Uh, so I love the PS4. I really do. Um, it probably sounds like I don't, and I kind of harp on it a little bit here and there. I, for a while there, I was actively collecting for it. And I mean, I still, I still browse every time I go into a store to see if there's just something I really want to pick up. You know, like things like The Division or Siege or uh, For Honor. They all look cool to me, but like I can't pay 60 bucks for something that I'm not going to be able to play in a couple years from now. I just can't do it. And by the time I can pay 15 to 20 bucks for it, there's nobody on the servers. So it's just like <sighs> I'm letting my tendencies as a collector get in the way of me enjoying games. So that is something as a collector that gets in the way sometimes but um so there's stuff like that or just and a lot of um a lot of these games man i just can't deal with all the patches and updates and like i know the younger cats that watch the channel they're probably like ah dude you make such a big deal about these patches and updates but like again if you go play your super your genesis your dreamcast your original xbox your gamecube your ps2 even your wii for that matter even the wii u for that matter you can play all those games without patches. 30 years from now, if you can find one of those systems still working, you pop the game in, it's going to work. PS4 and Xbox One, it's not going to be that story. And even late 360 and PS3 games, it's not going to be that story. You're just not going to be able to play the game. So, like, that's kind of why I'm getting out of current-gen collecting. But at the same time, retro collecting has is at an all-time high now. I've kind of been speculating myself that eventually it'll go down. A lot of people have done that, but like I've been collecting for a long time. I know I'm younger than a lot of people. I am 27, so like I I, I have been legitimately collecting, I'd say, probably since I was 12. So a good solid 15 years. I've built an awesome collection in my humble opinion. I've got, I don't have the greatest or the rarest or this or that, but I have 13 different consoles that have at least 10 to 100 games for. I've got all sorts of handhelds this is just some of them so like I've built up a great collection over the last 15 years and then obviously some of that before I was 12 you know it was just presents and stuff but after actually no I, I had my first paper out when I was 10 so somewhere between 10 and 12 is when I really started collecting because I just love games I just I just fucking love them man like <laughs> it's almost like an addiction but like it's not bad enough to where I'm like dude I gotta go home and play Xbox but it's just like I just love playing games and uh it, it truly makes me happy and like um i've just always enjoyed picking them up like i you could give me the crappiest game like aquaman for the xbox gamecube ps2 i'm still gonna play it and try to enjoy it you know what i mean uh nico actually bought that for the xbox a little while back eventually i might borrow it from him just to try it and uh see how terrible it really is it's reviewed as one of the worst games of all time but like i can find the joy in any game myself at least for 20 minutes you know but uh here I go on a mega ramble like always, but back to the PS4. Like I do love it, and it's 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 probably one of my most used current gen systems. Now, with that being said, I don't know if it's really just because it's kind of my Netflix box, or because I really truly do use it more because it because of the games. Uh, I have an Xbox One. It doesn't get much love at all. Uh, to me, the Xbox brand has always been about its exclusives there aren't any exclusives anymore. When the Scorpio drops, they revealed the specs finally. It sounds great and dandy. Uh, I was actually speaking with one of my subscribers about this, Morpheus. I've talked about him before. I personally think it's going to be anywhere from five to $700 when the Scorpio drops. Uh, he was saying anywhere from, you know, about four to 500. I just don't foresee them being able to drop it for any any less than five to five fifty, they just keep, they're not going to make any profit on it. They're just going to lose money. A seven teraflop processor, that's like a six hundred dollar graphics card. <laughs> um, I mean, hell, AMD doesn't even have one. They have one that's barely a little bit faster than that for like three hundred dollars. That's just the graphics card alone. 
So it's just not going to happen at that price point. If they can bring it out at 400, everyone will buy it. It'll it'll probably sell quickly, but with no exclusives aside from maybe Halo 6, what do you have going for you Microsoft? You don't. You don't got anything going for you. But uh this video has gone on long enough. That was just mainly the PlayStation video. Um, I think maybe every once a month I might start making like a, a kind of a rant video or a ramble video. Let me know if that's something you guys would actually want to watch. Um, I'm trying to diversify things and make different content. Uh, I'm trying to do twice a week like I used to on Saturdays and Wednesdays. Um, usually I try to put them up from 3 to like 7 o'clock, somewhere in that time frame, depending on how editing goes. Uh, so this will be up on Wednesday, so that's when you'll be watching this. And uh, Sunday we'll have my pickups, which I'm not going to show you. Well, actually, I guess it doesn't really matter. Because by the time you see this video, you'll have already seen all these. Um, so yeah, that's... Um, so I'm recording this one first just because I knew this would take longer. But uh, PlayStation 4 Collection, I do enjoy it. I recommend pretty much almost all these games. Uh, definitely the ones that don't need patches and updates. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Transformers. And oddly enough, like, it's just, it's very strange to me. Like, why do these need... At the very least, why does this need updates? This is from the sixth generation. Why does that need updates? You upscaled the resolution and you changed the buttons. Why does this need an update? Why is this not just all on the disc? It's just mind-boggling to me. But who am I? I'm just some gamer bitching about problems. But peace out for now, guys. Till next time. Come here, you mother. I'm on it. This is it, baby.